In this video, I'm talking about hearing aid dry in store kits and why you should be using one every night. Coming up. Hi guys, Dr. Cliff Olson, Applied Hearing Solutions, and on this channel, I cover a bunch of hearing related information to help make you a better informed consumer. So if you're into that, consider hitting the subscribe button. We all know that moisture is the enemy of electronics. And what moisture does, it does a few things. First thing is, is it corrodes components inside of an electrical device. So there's copper wire, there's different types of metal that's inside of electronic devices, and that metal can corrode. And when it's exposed to moisture over time, corrosion will happen. Not only that, but the incorporation of moisture inside of a device will cause short circuits because it messes with the, uh, the flow of electricity. And when that happens, you basically kill a device entirely. Now you're probably thinking, Cliff, most hearing aids are really highly rated for moisture resistance, so why do I really need to worry about it? And it is true that most hearing aids have an IP68 rating, six indicating they're at the highest level for debris resistance of getting into the device, and an eight rating, which is for moisture resistance. It's the highest rating that you can get on both of those. Uh, and that's great if we're talking about you know getting pushed into a pool or splashing water on them or accidentally going into the shower, but we're not really concerned about that. We're concerned about the long-term Term repeated exposure to moisture from them just being on your body. And in particular to hearing aids, there's a few things that happen. When you have continued moisture exposure with a hearing aid, you get something called microphone drift, which is where when you have normal microphones uh, that the day that you get your hearing aids, over time when moisture is exposed to these microphones, they start to warp. And what that warping does is it distorts sound quality. Not only that though, it affects the way that the hearing aid does its sound processing. So a lot of the additional features that you're spending good money on for good hearing aids, those features will stop working effectively once those microphones start getting messed up. Not only that, but going back to the corrosion aspect, you can get corrosion inside of your devices as well. And this will affect different things. It might affect the push button on your uh, hearing aid from working. It might corrode the battery contacts inside of your device. And all of these things lead to major problems down the road if you don't manage moisture correctly. How you can prevent this is by using a dry and store kit. Now there are three general types of dry and store kits, but they all have the same general concept. At the end of the day, when you're done using your hearing aids, you put them inside of their respective kit and it will pull the moisture out of those devices. And the reason that you do this is to maintain the longevity of the device, get it to work as long as it possibly can, but not only that, keeping the sound quality at a really high level the entire time that you have those devices. The first type is a passive dry and store kit that uses little silica beads to pull moisture from your hearing devices. The second option is a tray that heats up and creates an evaporation effect with your devices. And the third type does three things. It has silica beads in it, which absorb moisture. It heats up, which creates an evaporation effect, and it circulates air to force moisture outside of the hearing aids. So let's first talk about the jar with desiccants in it. Basically how these work is they just have a little simple silica bead container that's at the bottom of an airtight container. And what happens is, is that these generally start off one color and af over time of consistently removing moisture from your hearing devices, they will change into a different color. So these started as an orange color and right now they're a darker, almost like a greenish or blackish color. And that means that they've absorbed all the moisture that they can. And when that happens, you want to take this little disc and put it in the microwave and re-dry it out. And you can do that repeatedly a number of times. In fact, it can last you even a couple years of doing that if you don't accidentally melt it when you're doing the microwaving. And so how it'll work is you basically take that disc, you put it in the bottom of the container, take a hearing aid, you, know, you take your hearing aid off at the end of the night, you open the battery door, you drop it in here and close it. And overnight, any moisture that falls off of that hearing aid will be absorbed into those little silica beads. Now the pros of this is that it's super convenient. It's an extremely small container. You can take it traveling with you. When these desiccant beads run out of being able to pull in moisture, you can microwave it so it's essentially rechargeable in that sense. And um, it generally just does a, it does a pretty good job over a long period of time so you can continue to use it for years to come. 
A uh, couple of the negatives behind it is that it doesn't do anything else to promote either evaporation of moisture from the devices and it doesn't do anything to force any moisture outside of the devices. It basically, you set it in there, it's a very stagnant environment. Any moisture that does come off, it, yes, it will get absorbed, but it doesn't really do any technically advanced things. Um, it's also, uh, I mean, it's, it's cheap, but at the same time, it, it's not as effective as the other types that we're going to talk about. The next one that we're going to talk about is the heating tray. Basically how this one works is you take and you plug it into the wall. You'll see a little red light light up, and that means that it's heating up the tray. So at the end of the day, you basically switch it on. You take your hearing aid off. You put it on the tray and it creates a warmer environment in the tray than is what uh, is in your room at the time. And what that does is it creates an evaporation effect. So any moisture that gets warmed up and evaporates into your room's air will be removed from the device. Very simple concept, just using evaporation to dehydrate something. That being said, some of the pros with it is, again, it's really small. It's generally cheap, anywhere from 20 to 30 bucks to get yourself a tray like this. It will last a, a pretty long amount of time. And um, you know, from that standpoint, using evaporation is an effective method to remove moisture. That being said, some of the cons behind using a tray like this is, again, it doesn't circulate any air and there's no guarantee that when that moisture is evaporated from the device that the air inside of your room is dry enough to actually uh, take and hold on to that moisture instead of letting it creep back inside of your device, if that makes sense. Basically, if you have a really humid room that, or a humid house, uh, or if you have this in the bathroom, which don't use it in the bathroom, but if the, the air is moister in there than what the hearing aids are, then you might not really be doing anything with it. And it also, of course, um, requires a plug-in. So you need to keep it close to some form of an electrical outlet if you want to use a tray like this. The next one that we have is basically the three-in-one type device. And how it works is you have a desiccant brick in there. These bricks last about two months apiece. You have a chamber that has perforations in it that it allows air to circulate through the chamber and it also warms it up. So you're basically pulling out moisture from the silica beads, you're creating an evaporation effect, and you're forcing air through the device to push out any moisture that it has inside of it. How you'll use it is, of course, you take your hearing aid, you open the battery door, set it in the tray, you close it, you plug it into the wall, and you hit the button on the side, that will light up green and that will circulate warm air and pull out moisture for eight hours. And you wake up in the morning, you open the tray up, you have some bone dry devices that has had air completely circulated through the whole unit and it's ready to go. Pros of this, obviously you have more forms of moisture control happening and I can't speak highly enough of having a device that actually circulates air to pull more moisture out of a device. It does use silica uh, beads still, which is a very nice feature to have. These last two months apiece, so they last a long time, uh, and it will do a really good job compared to the other types that, we, that I've shown you here today uh, at removing moisture from your devices. That being said, a few of the cons of a device like this, of course, is that you need to plug it into a wall, which isn't always convenient. Uh, traveling with it isn't as convenient because it's a little bit larger of a unit, and you have to get new dry bricks for it every two months. You can't go and recharge these in your microwave like you can the other uh, silica beads that I showed you earlier. So those are a few downsides to it. That being said, these bricks right here, they only cost about three to four bucks a piece. So your upkeep annually is gonna be close to around 20 bucks if each one of these lasts you two months, okay? Um, so it, it, from a standpoint of what's the most effective, this one is absolutely the most effective. In fact, this one right here is called the Zephyr by Dry and Store. Dry and Store also creates one called the Global 2, which has a UV light in it. And it's debatable whether or not UV light actually does anything from a bacterial standpoint. And that's why I recommend that you use an alcohol swab to clean off your hearing aids to kill any bacteria. And then you don't really need that type of Dry and Store kit with the UV light. There's one more thing that I want to cover, and that is in terms of rechargeable devices. 
So over the last couple of years, a lot of the manufacturers have been creating these rechargeable devices that at nighttime, instead of putting them in a traditional drying store kit, you put them in a charger case. And what, we've, what I've seen is that a lot of times these rechargeable devices have more moisture issues as time goes on. You're usually good for a year or two, something like that. But as time goes on, that moisture sitting inside those devices constantly every day, even at night and not getting dried out, uh, creates moisture problems down the road. That being said, one company has done a really good job of thinking of this problem and incorporating a dryer inside of their recharger kit. Uh, the company's name is Phonak and it works with their Audeo BR, stands for rechargeable uh, line of hearing devices. And when you put them in their slots at night, you actually have a chamber here with perforations that you can put in a silica disc in to where when you close this up and you're recharging your units, it actually has some passive moisture removal, which isn't uh, exactly circulating air, but is absolutely better than putting it inside of a case like this, charging up and not actually removing any moisture from a device. So kudos to Phonak. If you are considering rechargeable hearing aids, I would highly recommend going with the Phonak line because they've solved that moisture problem. So this leads us to the next question. Is it really worth it? Is it worth it to spend your money, whether it's $15 for the really cheap kits or whether it's worth that $80 for the really good kits? Uh, is it worth it to worry about the moisture management side of your hearing aids? And I strongly suggest that you do worry about it and you do get at least something to control some of that moisture. The thing is, is that you will save money in the long run by doing this. And not only from a repair standpoint over the course of the lifetime of your hearing devices, but it will actually make your hearing devices last longer and have better sound quality. And you know, to spend as, as little as $15 or as much as $80 uh, on a kit is a drop in the bucket when you start looking at repair costs and replacement costs for hearing devices. Just remember that doing anything is better than doing nothing. So please do something from a moisture standpoint, from a moisture control standpoint for your hearing aids. That's it for this video. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. If you liked the video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you wanna see more videos just like this one, don't be afraid to hit the subscribe button. I'll see you next time. Oh, 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 oh,